Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and as promised, we will be reviewing the Dragon Nakana today. Actually, I didn't make any promises, but I really wanted to test this out. And let me tell you now, I did not expect it to be so much better than the plain vanilla weak ass Nakana. I mean, it was always going to be better, but I was a little surprised by the Dragon Nakana's performance, as you'll see later in the power and speed tests. In terms of looks, it is really similar to the plain Nakana, so if you loved that one, you'll love this one too. Once again, the sheath is not customizable, so you're stuck with that red color, which may or may not be a problem for you. If you're going for something like a white theme for your loadout, it may work. Honestly, a red and black theme is probably gonna work best. Nothing much to elaborate on the available skins because everything that the Nakana could get, this dragon version can. And if you're thinking about getting a skin for this thing, then make sure to go to the market console instead and get the Gemini skin bundle. Another tip on customizing the dragon Nakana has to do with the tertiary color. As you can see here, the blade is neutral for the most part except towards the tip where it starts to turn red. Gives it a bleeding or infused effect if you know what I mean and I really like this. The problem is with the sheath, you're never really going to see this part of the weapon. Maybe if you do a lot of uh, captura, like to pose with your weapons, then yeah, it'll be cool to showcase the blade with its highlights. But even then, the sheath kinda spoils the color coordination. Also, this thing over here, which I guess you can kinda call a Sugatra, well, it comes with the weapon and cannot be removed. If you don't like stuff dangling like that, then well, skins are your only bet, unfortunately. For me, it's completely fine. I even have my own Sugatra attached to the other side, just for the sake of attaching stuff. But yeah, it's a weapon that's a little low profile, but also a little less color neutral than the original Nakana. Alright, stats. We've already covered some of these in the previous video. Basically, the biggest difference is the base damage. This is still primarily a slashing weapon, but it deals 85 damage instead of 45 on the Nakana. Almost double, and this is helped with slightly boosted crit and status chances. The Dragon Nakana is also a tad bit faster with an attack speed of 1.0. Rivens would be a good idea as well as this thing has a strong disposition. Which still doesn't make sense to me because what that implies is so many people craft the plain Nakana until the disposition goes to crap, but not all of them go for this thing which is literally a massive upgrade. But all in all, the Dragon Nakana is a complete improvement over its smaller brother. And a very much needed one too, as we now see in the power test, this thing, this weapon, managed to put down the level 30 Nox in a chart topping time of 20.43 seconds. Brilliant. And actually, in a couple of instances, the time even dipped down into the 13 second range. Probably due to hitting a few more crits, but 4 out of 6 times, the timing was at about 20 seconds. Rest assured, these results are consistent, if not slightly conservative. Also insane if you compare them to what the plain Nakano was able to achieve. Timing was roughly halved and that makes sense since the damage on the Dragon Nakano is almost 2x comparatively. In the speed test, the Dragon Nakano becomes the first melee weapon to hit the sub 10 second mark with an average time of 9.72 seconds. This thing just slices through those level 50 elite lancers and at one point, I even doubted myself. Did I remember to take the mods off? Turns out I did. This sword just deals a lot more damage. Period. Now, everything looks great as we get into some modding. I'm gonna suggest two builds, you can choose either one, but ultimately the mods you have on hand is what's gonna dictate which build you're probably gonna go for. First up is my favorite, the Super Speed Crit Build. It's pretty similar to the build I recommended for the Broken War. Primed Pressure Point and Primed Fury. If not possible, you can use the non-primed versions as usual. Blood Rush, Body Count and Berserker are really the core components of this build. 
True Steel is really important too because even though on its own the mod will boost the crit chance from 15 to 24 percent, like no big deal right? I mean we got Blood Rush but as you can see here that 24 percent will actually help Blood Rush stack and give a much higher crit chance. At a combo of 2.5x you'd have a crit chance of 123 percent. Watch what happens when I remove True Steel. That number drops to 76.9%, which is not bad, but it's well below a hundred percent. I can guarantee you that you'll have a good time with the Dragon Akana with this build. The only problem is that these two are really, really difficult to get a hold of. So what do you do if you don't have Blood Rush and Body Count? I mean, you can still kind of farm for Blood Rush and Body Count doesn't directly affect DPS in any way. It just makes the build a lot more practical. But what if you don't have these two? Well, you can substitute them with a couple of status based mods like Prime to Fever Strike or any pair of mods that'll get you a secondary status which can be useful and strategic in dealing with certain types of enemies. Or you could squeeze in Killing Blow over here alongside Maiming Strike. Now Maiming Strike it was also not an easy mod to obtain, if you don't have the other two mods from the crit build then you probably won't have this one but let's say you do. Then at a combo of 2.5x you'll be dealing higher damage than the crit build actually at over 18k per second compared to just almost 14k provided you do some channeling. Now the thing with channeling is with melee 3.0 coming soon which is an update to the game that'll overhaul melee weapons mostly to do with combos in mid-air combat, channeling will probably be completely scrapped from the game and replaced with a new mechanic involving slam attacks. So this build is only temporary I guess, try to get your hands on both blood rush and body count, blood rush at least. Now before I wrap up with the mods, let's just go back to the super speed crit build once more and replace buzz skill over here with maiming strike. At 2.5x combo, you're dealing 26k in sustained DPS. And just look at that crit chance. It's numbers like these that make me kinda doubt if these calculations are even correct. I mean at 3x, well... Well, the numbers speak for themselves. Keep in mind that all of this is taking into consideration that you'll be doing slide attacks 100% of the time, not the uh, usual button smashing. While it is easy to slide around and hit enemies with the Dragon Akana once you're used to it, these numbers are kinda unrealistic. Still, that crit chance though. To sum it up, I think this would surpass the Broken War as my new favorite. I just have to commit with the Catalyst and some flat for that Gemini skin. I mean I'm really interested in this thing and want to make it part of my main loadout but I just don't feel ready to commit yet. I'm really interested but I can't commit. Story of my life. Dragon Nakana, highly recommended. Thank you so much for watching, if you like this video or find it cool then hit like and get subbed baby. Make sure to tap the bell too cause that's how YouTube works these days. Tons of super awesome content over on the Instagram page as well, link down in the description. See ya guys in the next video.